Hello beautiful color seekers. Today we're going to review my 20 days of the 100 day project. I'm looking forward to exploring the colors with you and finding out what you see in them because at the end I'm going to share what I see and what I can let's see, use them for, for inspiration. The possibilities are endless, so I hope you'll stay tuned and join in the fun. Grab a pencil and paper and let's get started. I wanted to share with you the first 20 days of the 100 Days Project. We've done a lot of different color mixing, and I thought it would be interesting to get your thoughts on what color combinations were your favorites. So please leave in the comments below the color palette you liked and what you thought of it. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. First, we're gonna do a quick flip through just so that you can see the colors as they appear with their leaves so that you remember them. This was day one and two, three and four, five and six, seven, eight, nine and ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 days, that's pretty exciting. So what I'm gonna do is, let's just concentrate on the colors. If you want to grab a pen and paper, here's what I want us to look at. We're gonna look at the colors this close, and I want you to tell me what you would paint with that color combination. Maybe you have a few colors in here, like, like these are really delicious. I love those. But I also love how the Davies Gray looks quite green next to the purple and the, and the pink. What would you use for this? What would you create with this? My whole point of doing these color swatches is to give me a different look at my palette. You know, normally I would use Davies Gray and the pink to dull down a lot of colors. But here I'm exploring and seeing what other colors and what great mixes they make. I would have never thought that purple and the Davies Gray would make these great kind of grays. And I love the color combination of that, just like I love it up here. So we're going to start with day one. And the colors on this are Schminky or tundra green, schminky tundra green, Magello shell pink, and Daniel Smith brown iron oxide, the enviro friendly color. These are my three favorite colors that I have been using since last year, and I just really like how they work together. So, what kind of things would you do with this? What kind of subject matters do you see using with this? Are you inspired by it? What are your favorite lines? Like, do you like these kind of lines? Or do you like up here? Or do you like these down here? Those are the questions I'm asking myself every time that I do these. What would I do with this? <laughs> so again, this is the schminky green, or the tundra green, the shell pink, and then the brown iron oxide. Okay, let's flip to day two. It's a brighter palette. This is Daniel Smith Manganese Blue. This is American Journey Apricot. And this is Senyale Bright Yellow Green. Now a much different palette from the one that I showed you earlier, but some lovely tones in there. I mean, look at how the apricot and the green, look at the tones that they made in there. I really love those three tones. What I could do with them, I could do anything with them. But what do they remind you of? Okay, let's go to number five and six. So these colors, Daniel Smith Lunar Blue, Daniel Smith Aurelian, Daniel Smith, Hematite, Violet, Genuine. 
Again, a different look. What are you seeing? What do you see in the possibilities? How does this inspire you? Does it inspire you? Of course, I lend to the more muted colors. These colors here, these up here. We're going into spring, and of course, this color with the bright sun, bright greens, bright blue sky, that's exactly what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? Let's go to the next one, number eight, seven and eight. <laughs> this one is Daniel Smith Sepia, Daniel Smith Quinacridone Coral, Daniel Smith Cobalt Green. Look at that range of colors. I like seeing what the splashes did here. It allows you to see the light tones really, really nicely. I mean, look at that tone there. Look at these in here. I love that one. <laughs> the possibilities are really what you see in the colors. I can suggest things, but I want you to find what interests you and what you could actually use as part of your palette. Quinacridone is a new color for me last year, and I'm finding that it mixes really well with a lot of different colors. Okay, we're going to 9 and 10. This is Daniel Smith Gray Titanium, Daniel Smith Indigo, and Daniel Smith Cobalt Teal Blue. Again, a totally different palette. I just got back from Florida and this palette feels like Florida to me. <laughs> I don't know what it feels like to you or remind you of, but that is definitely what it feels like to me. It's beautiful. Again, I like the way the water drops show the lighter hues. I mean, look at that right there between the indigo and the teal. You can see just a little bit of splashes there. I really like these lighter tones. Such possibilities for first washes on something. What are you seeing? What are you feeling? Let me know in the comments. Okay, we got 11 and 12 now. So this is Daniel Smith Lavender, Daniel Smith Olive Green, Daniel Smith Hematite Violet Genuine. My favorite part of this palette is right here seeing the lavender and this bright olive green match and create those beautiful colors. It's almost like a bluish green up here and I like that a lot. Again, look at the lighter values. Look at these light spots here. It shows you the possibilities of even more colorations. Remember that as I'm doing these, I could actually add more water to these and step them out, you know, five or five more times even more if I wanted, and that would give me a nice color range. I might do that for you in one of the lessons too to show you the difference and show you the possibilities because although I've got these color mixes here with three colors, we can step them out even further. And that's something that is really nice to know with your watercolors. Now we're going to 14 and 15. This is Daniel Smith Mayan Blue Genuine, Daniel Smith Quinacridone Violet, Daniel Smith Green Appetite Genuine. These two colors are the granulating colors, the violet is not. What are you thinking with this? This is really bright for me, <laughs> so I'm having a hard time visualizing what I see in it or what it could inspire. I'm probably most comfortable in these areas here where it's much more muted. Again, if I step it out, look how bright this green is here, or look how bright the violet is here. But I love these tones in here because that's me. I'm a muted painter. So if you're a bright painter, I would love to know your thoughts on what you see with this palette. Okay, 
Okay, 15 and 16. This is Van Gogh Raw Sienna, Daniel Smith Gray Titanium, Daniel Smith Quinacridone Burnt Scarlet. Now I have to say, if you do not have this Burnt Scarlet color, it is a beautiful color to mix with everything. It has been on my palette since I first started, <laughs> and it's one that I just really, really love. I love that it's more orange than red, but if you add a red or a coral to it, it looks fantastic. I would use every single one of these shades. I don't know that I would use the full strength this one or this one, but I would use every color in between. So what are you seeing? What is it inspiring you? What is it making you think of? Are you thinking of fruits or flowers or skies or water or people or things? What is it inspiring in you? I see a lot of stuff in this one. I really, really am inspired by those colors. Okay, we've got 17 and 18. This one, look at those splashes. That's exciting to me. I like seeing all the different values. So we've got American Journey Apricot here. We've got Van Gogh Dusk Yellow here. And then I have Daniel Smith Manganese Blue Hue here. Now, did you expect those colors? They're very muted in between the two colors here and between the two colors here. And of course, that's the color range I go after. What are you seeing here? What can you imagine painting with this palette? Would you paint something with this palette? To me, this is a pretty natural palette. I could definitely see using this outside, you know, for plain air painting a lot because of the tones that I'm getting in between here. Okay, and the final palette is 19 and 20. So this is Magello Shell Pink. Then we've got Holbein Davies Gray. And then I have Da Vinci Artemis. Artemis is the granulating color here. And look at the lighter values. Look what apricot does when it adds a lot of water. I think that's really beautiful. And look what the apricot and the Davies Gray created in here. I think these colors are very, they're warm, they're beautiful, and I love the lighter values a lot. <laughs> I can see a lot of application, especially if you do faces or skin tone. Those would be really lovely. And of course, I love the way the Artemis um, granulated here and split into the two colors. Artemis has a purple and a blue, so you can see the blue really coming through in some of the splashes. Remember, for a granulating color, a lot of water helps it split and divide and granulate. So I really, really love this palette as well. Of course, I love them all. <laughs> but this, this color palette really speaks to me. What are you seeing? Okay, I'm going to give you a few minutes to just write down your thoughts. And then what I'm going to do is go through and kind of tell you what I was thinking for each palette. I hope you've had time to write things down. I'm going to give you my take of the colors and what I see and how I would use them. So this is one and two. I see beautiful flesh tones in here. I mean, I just love all of those tones, especially with the shell pink. It could really add a lot of nice value to, to a face or people. I see peonies, especially in these colors. Love that. I see oak leaves in all of these here and here. Not the pink, but every color just about in between. I also see seashells. Again, I just spent a week in Florida, so sea is on my mind. And I definitely see them in here. Think of the corally colors and just the really beautifulness that, that the shape has with the stripes and the little mottledness and the inside of the shells. I just really see them in this palette really well. For three and four, 
this is a really intense palette for me. <laughs> I had a hard time finding stuff, but I did find stuff. And of course, I like the more muted areas in here. So I think springtime and brightness, we are coming into springtime now. So the grass is changing. The sky is becoming a little more blue. We went from a winter sky to a more spring sky now. So I'm liking the change there. That's what this feels like for me. It's bringing on daffodils in these colors, spring grasses. They're not this intense, but they feel that intense after a winter's gray. I also see the blue skies up in here. So this palette for me was all about springtime. And I really like the way that they converged here. That really, that green there, really, because it was the combination of the blue and the green, that definitely feels like springtime for me. So now we've got five and six. Five and six, I see this one being used for landscapes. I could definitely see plein air painting with this one because of the be beautiful color range here. We've got that nice blue, yet we have a nice yellow, and then we've got this kind of violet color, which mutes the things very nice. Look at those nice colors there. And we saw in this one, when you put the, the violet, or the hematite genuine and the blue together, to me, it was magical. I just really liked it. And when you mixed all three, you kind of got this dirty green, which I liked. So for this palette, I see yellow pears in this. I see green apples in this. I see river blues up in here. So you see how I'm letting my imagination just look at the colors and just let it transport me into where I see them fitting, into stuff that I do. So if you're a flower painter, all of these colors can definitely be used on flowers. If you're a landscape painter, most of these can be used on landscape in one way or another. And it's just a way to, I think, enlarge our toolbox when we're able to see something and create from just a color range like this, like what does that let us envision? I think that that's a really valuable thing for an artist to study. Seven and eight. This page to me just feels like the holidays, like Christmas. I think of warmth and I think of cinnamon and I think of apple pie and I just think of holly and berries. That's what this reminds me of, cinnamon sticks and red pears, a very warm feeling. And I think it's just because this brown and this quinacridone coral, the colors here are just so rich and warming. I mean, I can almost smell apple cider with cinnamon sticks on the stove just looking at this. It kind of transports me there. And yet I've got this beautiful green and some red in here so that it would create kind of holly and berries for me. So that's what I mean. It can transport you. And who knew that just mixing these three colors are going to give me this really warmth of a palette. So if I was thinking of holidays now, or if I was doing something for Christmas, I'm going to pull out these three colors for sure and see what kind of mixes I can do and what I can create with them because of the feeling that they give me. Nine and 10. Now again, we just got out of the winter month and this is exactly what it feels like at winter in my house. I'm in Indiana near Chicago and this feels very cold. <laughs> the colors of our sky is here. The colors of what the ice feels like is here. It just feels very cold. But yet I love the colorations too. So I think of cold and icy and I think of blueberries. These areas in here, you know how the blueberries have like that little, I call it mold, but it's not that little discoloration. It's more of these kind of tones. I like that. I also thought of elephants with these tones up here. Think of adding some of the deep blues into the elephant's shadow areas, I think would be really, really lovely. Rocks and water. Think of all of these, right? These represent the rocks. This represents the water. This represents a little bit of the sun shining deep in, into the water. And I just really, really like the, the image that it applies. When you say rocks and water, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the rock shapes and I'm seeing the water kind of go over it. And you can see it here. You can see how the gray tones are here where the blue kind of surrounds it. And I really, really think that that could be a lovely possibility. The color in here of all three of them mixing was just 
it kind of made my heart flutter a little bit because that's what I look for. I look for those little nuances of color that when I put that in a painting, no one else has that color tube. It's what I've created from the mixes and I like that. I will rarely use a color from a tube. I prefer to mix so that I have unique colors to my, to my paintings or to my art. So I hope that inspires you as well. 1112, this one I just think of landscapes because of the range of dull greens to the brighter greens here. And look in the lighter areas too. You're seeing all the different values of greens that we could really go into. Now the violets here will make it look like hills. Think of distant mountains or things like that. I, I really like that. I like the softness of this where the lavender and the green mixed. I also think of them as white shadows. So think of a white flower that is maybe shaded with these colors here, and maybe you add a really dark shade down here. I just think that would look really lovely. I'm thinking of a white clematis or a white daisy or something nice and full that you can really accentuate the leaves on there. I also think of leaves and lush. I just think of you know, like a boxwood bush or some kind of ferns where it's just a whole little section of them. I think of it very full and very colorful because of the different green varieties in here. 13 and 14. I see irises immediately. And I know when I did this one with you guys, I said I saw irises because we have such a variety here. It's also an intense palette. So for me, I'm looking like, how, how can I mute this down? And so I would probably, I wouldn't say never, but the intensity of these colors, I'm looking more at the lighter colors in this for my art because I like the more muted and I usually do a little softer looking work. But I also see cone flowers. I see bluebells. I see balloon flowers, which are more purple. And I also see pine greens. Look at this deep pine here. I just think that these would look really great on pine needles, pine trees, even hollies, something that has a real richness to them. The possibilities here, I really, really love because I liked seeing what the water did to it. I like seeing some of these lighter varieties come through. I liked when the blue and the green met together and they created this kind of really pretty gray. I like the three of them where they gave us this green gray in here. So it's just something to explore a little bit better, a little deeper. Now we've got 15 and 16. I think of this palette as flesh tones. I just instantly went to flesh in the sun. So think of sun streaming on a face. This is how I feel it would be represented. And that could just be me, but that's what I felt here. I also see daffodils and sunshine, coral bells, fall leaves, lichen, sunflowers. I mean, does this not just scream sunflowers? This is Corbels down here. It's just a really beautiful palette. I love how they intermingled together. I like the yellow and the burnt scarlet mixing too. It gave us a really nice color there. And this is a palette I would use over and over because I like the tones themselves, but I also like the lighter tints and what it could do to your paintings. 18 and 19. I see this as landscapes for sure. I mean, look at this. This gray stuff, so it puts it more in the distance where the other colors kind of brighten and bring it more forward. I see hills and valleys because of the gray tones. I see white flower shadows. I want you to think of, again, the clematis, something white that you could shade with this. This would look beautiful shaded on like a piece of lace or a white glass or something like that where you could pick up if it was outside, you could pick up some sky. You could pick up some grass tones. It's really, really lovely. I also see bark and these colorations here, and I see moss in this area here. So remember, I like nature, so I'm always going to find something nature-oriented in, in, in all of my palettes. 
And our last one is 19 and 20. This one, I thought of magnolias and iris, stormy skies. I mean, look at the grays here. I thought of melons and seashells up here. But this green too, this Davies gray and how it mixed here, this is really a like minty color. Think of sage and we have lamb's ear here, those kind of things. That's what I'm seeing in this palette. I would use everything in this palette except for probably this last color. <laughs> now I would definitely use it to mix because remember I liked it where it mixed the pink and the purple together and we got these lovely tones in the lights and the darks. So this is a palette I would use over and over and over and over and over again because I love all of the values everywhere. I like the tones, I like the shadows, I like the tints. So I hope by exploring these colors it's letting you look at these simple swatches as something more, as a starter to your art, as a starter for creativity, as inspiration. By the time this is done, I should have 20 color palettes because I'm halfway through my book now. So I should end up with 40 pages of inspiration. Now, who wouldn't love that? <laughs> and it's a bunch of colors that I normally wouldn't put together, so it's letting me see the possibilities. And I love for any artist to expand their toolbox and have more possibilities. I just think it's a win-win for all of us. So thank you for exploring these colors with me, and I can't wait to read your comments to see what you thought of 